Hi everyone, this is Jeff from Tau Player Mouse. Tim Hamilton of Tactical G Code is a professional prototype machinist and was wanting to know how different metals with completely different properties, different densities, would act as shotgun slugs. So he made the exact same slug out of seven different metals. The first one we will be testing is mild steel, also known as carbon steel. And just for the heck of it, I blued it using a chemical process to make it that darker color. Here you can see how he machined it to make it very nose heavy. It'll be interesting to see how the other slugs of the other metals will behave at supersonic speeds being fired out of a 12 gauge shotgun. And I should mention if you were to have a machinist fabricate one of these rounds for you, it would cost $40 each. Okay, steel slug, Tim Hamilton design, Tim What's his uh, tactical G code? Is his channel? Let's see how it loads. Perfect. Yep. We took a box and packed it full of sand. It's about 12 inches thick, and what we're trying to do is capture that slug in the sand. This next shot, we have a steel plate that he'll be shooting at, and the plate's set at an angle, and we're hoping to deflect the round off the plate and into the box, and again, capture that slug. <laughs> I blew a hole in the sandbox. <laughs> now, water is supposed to stop bullets pretty well. We've seen a lot of videos about that. So we have a five-gallon carboy here full of water, and it's approximately 16 inches Thick. Did wow. it go through? Did you I, see the I cap? See this. Cap way up there. Yeah, flying saucer. Now, without our high-speed cameras, we really wouldn't know the full story here. We wouldn't know how the rounds were traveling through the air, if they're flying straight or tumbling, and we probably wouldn't even notice that that round actually went through the 12 inches of sand and was tumbling out the back of the box and into the sand pile behind it. All we have as evidence was just that hole in the box. Now in the bottom panel you can see the slug. It has a little bit of a waggle to it, but it was flying pretty straight still. This round was probably traveling in excess of 1200 feet per second. You know, about the same speed as a 22 shot out of a rifle. What's cool here is we were able to use this footage to actually find that round in that sand pile and recover it. It was the only round that we actually recovered, unfortunately. Okay, this is the shot of the steel plate, and it was a little bit low and almost out of frame here. But if you look at the angle of the gun, he was pretty much aimed at the center of the plate. And you can see the slug as it passed through the corner of the box and shot off to the right there. But it really slammed the plate very hard and the block of wood we had behind it was thrown about 10 feet behind the target. Even though the round hit a little bit low on the carboy, it still passed through the full 16 inches of water and ejected out the back. We shot a 762 by 54 r Mosin-Nagant round at the same setup before and that round didn't even pass all the way through. So that kind of gives you an idea how different a solid steel round like this behaves as opposed to one that's a little softer and more frangible. And of course this round is traveling at less than half the speed of a Mosin-Nagant round. And here's the round that uh, Darren found. And this is the one that passed all the way through 12 inches of sand and then came out the other side of the box and then we were able to dig it out of the sand pile behind this setup. Now the reason why we wanted to trap these so badly was of course we wanted to analyze them and see what kind of damage they sustained. But we also thought it would be a good way to kind of fundraise for Tim. Uh, machine work is kind of expensive. The time, material, and the tooling is pretty expensive and we want to encourage Tim to continue 
making these rounds and posting really cool videos. Send me a PM if you are interested in making an offer on this and I'll even throw in a Tau Flater Mouse sticker. You're probably curious how Tim made these on his crazy robot machine, so be sure to check out his video. I'll also put a link in the description. Thanks for watching.